Now, one of the things we want to talk about is going to be cathodic protection. And basically, cathodic protection is one of the methods you're going to use or a, a company, an operator would use to reduce or helpfully, hopefully eliminate corrosion in a pipeline. And basically, you have two different types of cathodic protection. One type of cathodic protection is where you have what's called a sacrificial anode. And you've got something like zinc, magnesium, some type of metal that's actually designed to oxidize to rust. And what you're going to do is you're going to sacrifice that piece of metal. So that's what we call that sacrificial anode. Another type of cathodic protection is where you have induced voltage. So you've got very, very low voltage. You've got direct current that's running in that pipeline. And typically, why we use cathodic protection is we're going to talk about external coating, and that's one way to protect the pipeline from external elements like water, freezing, uh, corrosive soil and whatnot. But we're typically going to use that coating in conjunction with cathodic protection. So I just want to emphasize to you that whenever we talk about corrosion control, we almost always have more than just one method. It's in conjunction with cathodic protection as well as coating that, that carbon steel. And that's normally what we're going to use for a pipeline. Now let's talk about an operator. And this is defined by the Department of Transportation. It says, means a person who owns or operates pipeline facilities. So that may be the actual owner or the operator. There's another term called PHMSA. And that's going to be the U.S. Department of Transportation Pipeline and Hazardous Material Safety Administration. So they're going to regulate pipeline and hazardous material safety for DOT. Now let's talk about a pipeline. We've got lots of definitions here, but a pipeline or pipeline system means all parts of a pipeline facility through which a hazardous liquid or carbon dioxide moves in transportation, including but not limited to line pipe, valves, and other appurtenances connected to line pipe, pumping units, fabricated assemblies associated with pumping units, metering, and delivery stations, and fabricated assemblies therein, as well as breakout tanks. Now again, just to emphasize, this standard contains minimum requirements for protection of metallic pipelines from external, internal, as well as atmospheric corrosion. Let me give you a very good example. I mentioned to you that I worked at Mobile Oil in Beaumont, Texas, one of the largest refineries in the United States. And we had miles upon miles of underground firewater lines. Now this is not related to DOT, it's related to protecting our facility that had millions and millions of gallons of gasoline and crude oil. The requirement is that that piping be what's called Schedule 40 piping. However, we found that the environment was so corrosive with the soil, clay, silt, other material, that Schedule 40 piping would actually rust through or would corrode the pipe. So on our own accord, we upgraded our requirement to Schedule 80 piping. So I want to emphasize to you, as we go through the standard, you may say, well, we're actually going above and beyond that, your installation, and that's fine. Because based on the application, where you're located, you may have to go above and beyond to make sure you're not just meeting minimum requirements, but you have an effective corrosion control program.